making the news for 30 years. 1982 to 1992. The Golden City Press launched on March 28, 1982. It was born into a time of cautious optimism. On the ground, there was an upbeat sense that apartheid was crumbling and that Nelson Mandela was about to be released. In response, the apartheid regime became more bloody and more bizarre. Legendary writers and editors such as Obed Musi, Percy Koboza, Mono Badela, Sandili Memela and Kurus Bia refused to be intimidated and attacked the authorities with guts and style. Their journalism voiced a generous, humorous and tough-minded spirit in black South Africa. Yet these were gloomy times. Deaths in detention, forced removals, delusional homeland tyrants, and the first whispers of AIDS on the continent. But history was also being made. A sustained war against the state led to the unbanning of political organizations, and South Africa's future leaders were released from jail. It was a bitter yet booming decade for the South African entertainment industry. The music scene was bled by the exile of many great performers. African-American actor Sidney Poitier pleaded to his countrymen to support the cultural boycott. Singing sensation Ivan Chaka Chaka charmed Africa. Between these poles, a new wave of superstars were born. A pint-sized 19-year-old Brenda Fassi held her audiences spellbound. Renowned actor John Carney wielded his theatrical talents like a political sword. And Lucky Dube took the international reggae scene by storm. During the anti-apartheid boycott years, South African sport was a claustrophobic world. But the leather curtain of isolation did not prevent the rise of stellar talents. City Press covered the local football and boxing rivalries with rapt excitement, along with the countless Byzantine twists of sports politics. Kaiser Chiefs ruled the football kingdom but as the 90s dawned, Orlando Pirates and Mamelodi Sundowns began to stir. It was an era defined by passion, unrest and revolution. We were there. Nineteen ninety two to two thousand and two. The decade spanned the greatest leap in South African history. We returned from the brink of civil war and economic collapse to found a thriving young democracy inspired by visions of an African Renaissance. The world celebrated in nineteen ninety four as it watched South Africa host its first democratic elections. While consistently supportive of the ANC government, City Press published biting critiques of South Africa's new leaders when they blustered. Freedom's honeymoon was brief. On the field of dreams, Bafana were champions of Africa and the box champions of the world. The spectral hand of history seemingly guiding the players at Ellis Park and Soccer City. International sport was a profound reward of freedom. It gave both white and black South Africans a glimpse of a non-racial future. It was a trying decade for the highbrow culturati, as the rude urban youth seized the showbiz mainstream. The Kwaito revolution exploded onto the airwaves, providing South African youth with a new method of self-expression. We soon fell in love with a new generation. Though the movie business struggled to exploit freedom, a new wave of fantasy, soaps and realist dramas captured the hearts and minds of the people. For ordinary South Africans, freedom did not bring comfort, education or safety. And the past clung to the present like a stinking pall of smoke. Yet society was changing faster than anyone realized. City Press recorded this journey with verve and awe. We were there. 